Hey, everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 24th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Here comes the storm train. We've been talking about it for over a week now, and it is finally arriving. Winds are picking up across the region. It's going to be blustery on the coast today. We got another storm system rolling in here on Saturday. Lots of cold air aloft, thunderstorm potential, mountain snows, big waves for the coast. You name it, we got it. Let's dive into those details. Take a look at where we are right now. Look at this powerful frontal system on the visible satellite imagery with our next storm system up under development way off to the west there but we've got some moderate bands of rainfall maybe even heavy bands of rainfall that'll be moving through at times today also so if i scroll back and forth you can kind of see that front propagating across the region as we speak so nicely defined there on the goes 18 satellite imagery now again talking about this jet stream for the last week and you see it really point at the west coast of north america as i toggle back and forth you can see saturday system ramping up right there and we're probably going to stay active as we go on and through next week as well very deep low somewhere between high to Gwaii and vancouver island probably another strong frontal system for the pacific northwest and rainfall chances continue on in through the first week of of November. Now, they don't have the high surf advisory out for the coastal areas. I, I, I believe they should just have left that up, but that's just my opinion. Wind advisories probably warranted across Western Washington, some of the coastal areas already as well. If we take a look a bit further south, they do have the surf advisories and the high wind warnings are in effect when you got the winter weather advisories for some of the cascades here of both Washington and Oregon as well. And if we look down towards Medford, they talk about these big breaking waves and these waves are going to be all the way up the coast, Vancouver Island, Washington and Oregon. Don't turn your back on the ocean. Watch out. It's going to get chaotic here as we go through this weekend. Now, strong winds, Oregon Kells, look at some of these gusts up to 65 miles per hour hour now Brookings, 3.37 inches. Look at that Point Orford, North Bend, some big amounts coming in here. Crater Lake up over three inches and again, some snow for the higher terrain. Now looking at the precipitation, this is the artificial intelligence ensemble. By the time you get towards Saturday morning, already saddle up over 1.1 inches. We get on in towards Sunday morning, 1.6, some bigger amounts across Vancouver Island, the coastal areas, all the way down through Southwest Oregon, Cascades. But you do see the strong rain shadowing across the portions of Eastern Washington, Oregon, interior of BC as well. It does pick back up when you get towards the higher terrain, but the bulk of that precipitation definitely falling western Oregon, Washington, and western BC over the next few days. And then as we scroll off into the future, this goes out two weeks, but I'm just going to go all the way out here. And you can see Seattle, six inches of precipitation by the time we get towards the first week of November and much bigger amounts, the west coast of BC, higher terrain, and across some of the coastal ranges, Cascades also. So a lot of precipitation, definitely fall-like weather. Now, here we go with the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. We're looking at surface pressure. And again, we're tightening things up. We're already getting some gusty winds out there, especially Northwest interior and some of the coastal areas on the day today. And then we go on in towards Saturday and a lot of areas are going to be getting their strongest winds with this system. So there's the GFS and there on the right, there's the European on the left. Look at this power pack pressure gradient. These are four millibars, each one of these lines. So that brings very strong winds to the Washington coast. The GFS is later with the system. System, brings it through later on Saturday night and through Sunday morning. But there's also a very tight pressure gradient that shows up on these models across the Willamette Valley and the Puget Sound. I mean, you're talking up, you know, potentially 10 millibars here from Seattle to Portland as the slow pressure goes right into the interior of British Columbia. So we do have some strong winds likely incoming. And early in the season, I think there should be wind advisories up. There's a lot of leaves on trees and a lot of trees aren't tested yet. So it's probably going to cause some power outages. And I'll show you some of these wind speeds here in a moment. And if we look at 925 millibars, you'll see some of the differences in some of these wind speeds. And we scroll out here right there. You can kind of see that bent back occlusion. The surface low is right there. And you can see the strong winds coming across some of the interior areas, some of the coastal areas. And as we go on in towards Saturday afternoon, you can see that bent back occlusion coming up the Washington coast. And just a reminder, there are no advisories or high surf advisories or anything like that up right now. So again, just my opinion, but I strongly think that is warranted. And then the GFS later with that bent back occlusion, the stronger winds not moving up towards Saturday until Saturday night for the Washington coastline. 
As we scroll off into the extended a little bit more, another deep low out there. Look at this monster somewhere towards Haida Gwaii and Vancouver Island. That would bring us a strong frontal system, probably far enough away that the strong winds would not impact much of the region, except for some of the coastal areas it would bring some big waves as well. But we'll be watching the track on that. As you can see, the GFS is much weaker with this low and also much closer to the coastline. So if we take a look at the North American model, I'll scroll through here and you can see this low pressure center and look at that pressure gradient across the Oregon coast. That's why high wind warnings are in effect. And that goes through Saturday. And then you can see this bent back occlusion tries to get up into portions of Washington. Now, there is some disagreement on where this low is going to set up, but that's a little bit further north that exposes the Washington coast to much stronger winds. You can see the pressure gradient is not tight there. But as we move on in through Saturday night into Sunday, look at this pressure gradient. I mean, you're talking about from Everett 4, 8, 12, 16 millibars from Everett to Portland right there. That would bring some pretty strong winds up into interior portions uh, as we go on in through Saturday night. So yeah, we really got to watch the exact track of this low, but there is the chance for some pretty strong winds. And I'm going to start showing you these wind speeds now. So this is today already ongoing Northwest interior, some gusts up over 50 miles per hour showing up. And as we go through the day today, you see some of these gusty winds for the coastal areas can't rule out 50 plus mile per hour gusts on today. And then we go for uh, Saturday. This is starting to go into tomorrow, Saturday. You see some of these stronger winds come across the area. 47 for Seattle, 48 for Everett. This would be problematic. Again, the Willamette Valley teasing at 50 miles per hour for some locations as well. With all those untested trees, leaves still on trees, that could be an issue, folks. I would not be surprised to see power outages with that. And you can see stronger winds still along the coast, depending on just how strong this low is and just exactly the track of it. So, Accumulated positive snow depth change in inches. I do want to share this as well. So watch as we go on in through Saturday night. You see some of that snow right there. There's Saturday night. So you got Snoqualmie Pass right there. There's Stevens Pass. Some of the North Cascades getting some big amounts. I mean, some areas up over a foot. And this is accumulated positive snow depth change in inches. This is not a cherry picked model and a nice round of snow coming for the Olympics. And then as we go on in through Sunday morning, you can see some of that snow still piling up for Snoqualmie. Stevens Pass, seven inches, shows three inches on the ground for Snoqualmie Pass. So watch out for some winter driving conditions. And I did get a question about this. This is snow depth on the ground. That's Mount Rainier right there. So if, just in case you notice, there's still snow on the ground year round there for Mount Rainier. But you can see some of the lower elevations as we go on in through the day Sunday show, I mean, Tiger Mountain shows up a little bit of snow there as well. So the snowballs may be getting down below even 3,000, 2,500, 2,000 feet. You see some of the higher, uh, the lower terrain there of Eastern Washington, higher terrain would be across Northeast Washington, but you can see some of that snow trying to tease out into some of the lower elevations there. So do watch out for those raw conditions and a little bit of wintry driving conditions there as we go on and through the day Sunday, especially across the mountain passes. Now looking at maximum individual way fight. So here we are Let's go off towards this morning. We're Friday. We're about, what, 17Z right now. So you can see there is elevated wave action up and down the Washington coast right now, and that would mean sneaker waves, you know, so don't turn your back on the ocean. And then we go on and through the day today, a little bit of a wane, but it's not much as we go through tonight into tomorrow morning. Then the bigger waves start to arrive as we go through the day on Saturday. And you can see those waves move up towards the Washington coast as well. So yeah, I think that they probably should have left that surf advisory up, uh, you know, but yeah, it looks like some pretty good waves here coming on the European model and those will last on in through the day Sunday, still elevated wave activity. Finally start to get a break there as you go through uh, what on the day Tuesday, but then there's another strong system that's going to be rolling through next week. And again, we'll be watching that one over the next few days. Some big waves for the Northwest Washington coast and Vancouver Island with that one, if that were to verify. Also, we have to talk about thunderstorm activity. This is lightning flash density potential. So we're going to scroll on in through the day today. I'm not really worried about the frontal system too much in the way of lightning, but with this next system out there, look at, you can see the cold air aloft. We've got our mid-latitude cyclone, our low-pressure system, spreading thunderstorm chances as we go through the day on Saturday. And some of those could sneak in across interior portions as well. You're not looking at widespread hundreds of lightning strikes across the region, but you can get some thunderstorms in there. You get a couple strikes and then the storm moves off and you could get some of that even east of the Cascades as well. So yeah, 
play through that one more time. There's that low pressure center there spreading some of that instability and that lightning potential as we go on in towards uh, all the way on through Saturday night, actually. And probably again on Sunday, still going to be some thunderstorm potential as well. Now, the North American model, this is what the Doppler radar may look like here over the next 60 hours. So as we're going through the day to day, this is around the noon hour. You can kind of see some of this heavier precipitation up across, you know, Skagit, Whatcom County. You see some of this moderate heavy rain rolling in across Western Oregon, narrow cold frontal rain rain band kind of swooping across some of the Puget Sound there and look at that band of precipitation. This would be about 4 p.m., 5 p.m. Look at that moving across just to the east of Salem there as well. So pretty active weather today before the next uh, system starts to roll in as we go through the day on Saturday. You see all these showers. Again, lightning potential with some of these individual showers as we go on in through the day Saturday, Saturday night, and then eventually on through Sunday, maybe some additional uh, shower potential there as we go on in the day Sunday as well. So Look at it, Hoquiam. You can see gusts 51 miles per hour. That'll get your attention early in the season, especially with lots of leaves on trees. You could, you know, you could make the case for a wind advisory needed with that. And this is the gust today. It shows it in the mid 40s. So if we take a look at Portland, 47 miles per hour, that would probably do some damage to trees and probably cause some power outages. You see, the ensemble mean is clearly up into the mid 40s. Spokane, not quite as bad. Gusts probably up into the 30 mile per hour range nothing too extreme don't expect power outages from that and bend you got the system that's going to be rolling in here this afternoon and tonight and then the next system here as we go on in through the day saturday probably gusts in the mid 40s in both cases here is cross some of the higher terrain this is off to the east of mount rainier you could be expecting gusts up over 60 miles per hour definitely raw conditions you know if you're going to be up going to sunset or paradise or wherever across towards mount rainier across a lot of the cascades washington oregon some very strong winds up and down the cascade so do be prepared for that especially on the day saturday and saturday night now seattle tacoma the latest i believe showed 47 but this one shows 44 somewhere in the mid 40s but you know every mile per hour accounts with when you've got leaves on trees and you can see there are still some ensemble members actually quite a few of them that show 48 50 plus mile per hour gusts the ensemble mean is up squarely into the low 40s as well now look at tillamook today showing some gusty winds but the strongest winds arrive on the day saturday gust into the mid 50s now this precipitation is important this is the last three years i showed this yesterday but we're run, running a big deficit here across some portions of western oregon and western washington the last two years some of the cascades Oregon, Washington, still 20 inches below normal for the average over the last two years. And even over just the last uh, year, some places, the central Cascades of Washington and north Cascades of Oregon, coastal range there, Olympic Peninsula, some areas are still 20 inches below normal for this time frame here. So uh, hopefully we get a wet season rolling in here. This is not a bad start to it, no doubt. And hopefully what the European artificial intelligence was showing is going to come to fruition and bring a bunch of rainfall across the higher trains that affects stream flow it affects groundwater it affects wells all kinds of stuff uh, check out the patreon page i'll kick this video out now there's a good chance i'm going to be going out to the coast tomorrow probably the washington coast i was thinking about going down to shore acres and seeing the big waves but that is a huge drive from the seattle area so i may just be going out to the washington coast and bringing the anemometer set up and i plan to be live streaming while we do this so hopefully you guys can join me for that so if i don't do a video then expect a live stream at some point on the day tomorrow. Still haven't fully decided just yet. But anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, and I will talk to you guys later.